welcome to Abundant Life. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everybody joining us at home. We're so glad to be joined together, whether we're joined by the Spirit or we're joined closer than, um, in closer proximity. We are all part of the same body and we worship the same God. So let's praise God this morning, shall we?
God, that is who you are, the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are. Can we just sing that chorus again one more time? Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. Oh, yes, we make Forsake her suckling child, that she should not have compassion in the son of a woman. I am the way maker, I am the miracle worker, I am the promise keeper. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for your presence today. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Hallelujah. Way maker. Amen. Amen. Could you be seated, please? Good morning, church. Good morning. And good morning to those who are who will be watching or are watching watching online. It's a blessed day. It's a good day to be alive. Amen. Amen. In spite of what is happening around, it's a good day to be alive. It says, "Whose report do you believe?" We choose to re to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am Calypse. It's a privilege to stand in front of you today and minister on a few things. Right now, I'll be talking on giving. Um, on giving, the importance of giving that will usher us into the offerings and tithe. And as we're driving uh, with the family to come here, uh, my mind, God, I believe God was tearing my mind to go to um, Genesis chapter 26. You know, the last Genesis 26, we'll start with one, please, if you can, Ms. here. The last time I was here, I talked about the seed. And that the kingdom of God operates, you know, there are different dimensions by which the kingdom of God operates. And if we don't understand it, we will leave haphazardly. You know, Apostle Paul says, I fight not like one beating the air. You, we can live a Christian life like one beating the air, roaming around. But when we understand that seed time and harvest time does not cease, we'll be looking for the seed time and the harvest time, operating in the seasons of God. So in the last few weeks that I talked about this, it's been a few, maybe two months now, I talked about the importance of the seed, the nature of the seed, and that, has, that is tied to the state of our hearts, irrespective of the size of the seed. Today, I'm stirred to talk on the soil. Now, Genesis chapter 26, it says, There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Jerah. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt in the land of which I, ha I shall tell you. Dwell in this land. Now, verse, if we move on to verse 12, please. It says, Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. You know, if you are, because we have older folks here, they probably understand better than some of us who are younger the, how farming operates. That you may fertilize the soil, you may have good seed, excellent seed, but if the soil is not good enough, the seed is not very relevant. So the, the, the expectation of the harvest is driven by the quality of the seed, which we talked about last time, and the nature of the soil. Just like it is today when there is difficulty everywhere, 
Isaac lived in a time when there was famine. And scripture says it's not the famine, so we don't get it confused, that with the, one, the one that existed when it was with Abraham. This is new famine, just like it is difficult now. But the secret to growing bountifully in the season of famine is in sowing. And Isaac sowed. And Isaac sowed. There was famine. There's no reason rationally the mind would tell you don't sow. Like the woman in Zarephath who would hold the tendency, the natural tendency of man is to hold on to the little we have. This is the only little I have to eat it with my son so that we may die. Mm -hmm. But the scripture says so. If we don't understand the principles of the kingdom, we will operate and receive just like the world receives. But scripture says, ye are in the world, but you are not of the world. And so, if we want to operate in the dimensions that God wants us to operate, it is a season of famine where people are losing their jobs. But God is speaking to us. What is God saying? Is God saying, hold it back? No. I think not. How do we know the nature of the soil? I have two points on that. God will reveal it to us just as he revealed it to Isaac because God spoke and said, don't move. The next one is, which I think is very important, is in James 1, 27. True, pure religion and undefiled is this. To the Father, of course, to the Father, and to God and the Father is this. That we visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So how do we know where, where it's fertile soil? When a church, when a minister is ministering in these areas, giving to the orphans, the widows, providing to the poor, the needy, this church has that in its DNA. There are missions, missions that are being supported in Thailand, in Uganda, so in many other areas for you know uh, um, uh, human trafficking, when a church is operating in this dimension, you don't even need to sp the spirit too much to descend. I mean, if you can't descend, if God doesn't speak, you know this is good soil to sow, because it is so soil where if I sow, I will reap bountifully. And Isaac sowed when it was famine. So I want to encourage you. As we speak, I believe God, by the Holy Spirit, is speaking in your minds. It is an opportunity to give. I would like to end with this one testimony. Back when I was a teenager, I remember, you know, we were struggling. People would come and entice us, give, give, and you give. And then you wonder, that was enticement. Later on, he said, that was just enticement. And so one preacher came, a visiting preacher. He, he was asked to come and talk on giving. And this dude just said a few words. And as he was ministering, I felt in my mind, this is the atmosphere. This is the time to sow. But I mean, I was unemployed. Things were tough. I didn't have anything to give. And as I was pondering, I thought, I have a watch that my elder brother gave to me. I cherish it so much. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, give it. I mean, back in Africa, everybody was going to give money. I took my watch, wrapped it very well, prayed. I said, Father, thank you for the opportunity to give. I went and gave it. I didn't know that one of my nieces, whom I was taking care of, had watched me. Months later, she came and said, why did you give your watch, the watch that was sent to you by a brother from the US? I said, I identified by the spirit that the atmosphere is ripe for giving. So I'm sowing that I may reap bountifully. So I want to encourage you, as we'll be singing a song. Yeah. Um, oh, OK. Sorry. So feel free, sorry, we're just trying to trash out the difference here in the program. Um, feel free to come and give and give with a joyful heart. 
give with a joyful heart. Pray for the seed. Pray and speak and trust God. We'll be talking today about trusting God and trust God for a miracle. Amen? Yes.
Hallelujah. 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 For in you we move and live and have our being. For without you we are empty and nothing void. But in you we are more than conquerors through Christ. For Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the revelation of the Father in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship your holy name. We bless the name of the Lord. We give him all the glory and all the praise. We worship King Jesus. We exalt his holy name. We say you are worthy. You are worthy of it all. All the praise, all the glory, all the adoration. For there is no one like our Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. When I talked about giving, uh, I somehow I forgot to mention about those who are online. If you're watching online and you feel an urge to give, you feel a need to give. You, this is a good ministry to support with your finances if you can. Um, go online to our website, Abundant Life Church, Edmonton, and there's, there are there are possibilities of give opportunities to give with dif with different cards, and um, give and you'll be blessed. And to those of us who are here, while you're seated and not singing, it's okay to take off your mask. I just learned that it's okay to bring down your mask, um, except if you don't feel very comfortable. It's very okay. Um, you know, I, I understood this thing has taught us, many of us, many lessons. Uh, I'll let Mama say a word before I continue. I just wanted to share something before uh, Calypse continues. It, I don't know if you saw online yesterday, they had a large worship, outdoor worship service in Orlando, not Orlando, in um, or Portland. Last week they were burning Bibles there. That's where they, all the activities been. So these guys took it upon themselves, went in there from all over the country and had a worship service, thousands of people worshiping God. So you can go online uh, and get the information if you want to see it. Powerful time, some black fellows sharing about unity and then uh, the worship team just blew the socks off them. So it's awesome to watch and see people are moving in where the devil tries to take over. These guys are moving in. That's what we need to keep praying, praying for these protection of these guys, the ones that are in the front lines there and doing what God's telling them to do. So praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What was I going to talk about? Okay, about faith levels. And that in this season has revealed different faith levels. Thank you very much for that word. It shows that even in this season, there are people who are seeing using God's eye and doing things according to the ways of God and not following the patterns of the world. And that is what we are encouraged to move into, that we will not, be, we will not leave as though who are living in the world, but will live as though we are directed by the Holy Spirit, as ones that are directed by the Holy Spirit. Now, before I even move into the message, there's, there's something that is happening in these seasons. You know, as a Christian, if you don't understand the seasons of God, you will always be out of tune. If you don't understand the seasons of God, you will pray, worship, and do the same things, same time, uh, same things, and then you will always be out of tune. Remember, Jesus met a lady at the well. He said, you worship but you know not whom you worship. Is it possible for someone to worship and not know whom they worship? Jesus moved with the disciples from, for a long time. 
And then he came to a point just before he went to the cross. He turned and asked them, who do men say I am? And they said many things. Then he went to, he said, who do you say I am? They started, ah. That is after casting devils, coming back with reports. You worship. You know not whom you worship. But we know whom we worship. Hallelujah. Today we'll be talking on trusting God. And uh, I believe the presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. The vibration of the Holy Spirit is here. To bring us in sync with what he has for us today. And I believe this is a word of God. Immediately, Pastor told me about um, the need to um, preach today. I, I, I set my heart. Set my heart to hear what God wants us to talk about. And I feel like this is the word of God for us today. Trust in God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, please. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, it is possible. There will be many words I'll be throwing in as a spirit list, as I feel like. It is possible to know the scriptures and speak the scriptures and not operate in the revelation of the scriptures. The Ethiopian eunuch read, and was, he was reading Isaiah, but he had no comprehension because there was no revelation. Upon this rock, you are Simon Petrus. Upon this rock, I will be my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The rock of revelation that I am the Christ. If you don't have revelation and you just have the word, I pity you. Because seasons will come and go. And we will miss it. Uh, many times when I'm up here, I talk about it, is, it will be deceptive for all of us to just, no, let me not say all of us, for us to just move and think that, well, by virtue of the fact that we sing, we, we, you know, we love God. Well, should I say we love God? We sing and do these rituals. We, we will make it. Because scripture says there were ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. Being a virgin does not guarantee that you meet the, the groom. Today we'll be talking a little bit about that. Five were wise and five were foolish. The wise ones had oil, the anointing. No doubt it says only those who are filled with the spirit shall be caught up. Because five were wise and five were foolish. Back to our session. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Let me say, just announce what is going to happen today. Two things. Uh, I should speak of the first. The first one that will happen as I will be speaking and I trust God for the Holy Spirit to minister. You know, Jesus says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. There will be a shift in your mind as I'm speaking. There will be a shift in your mind and the Holy Spirit will be searching to direct you. What does it mean to trust? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. What does it mean to trust? Trust means abiding confidence. Abiding confidence. You know, man's greatest desire, us humans that God created in his image, our greatest desire is love. So God brought us love, for God so loved the world. Christ is the love of God manifested in the flesh. For God so loved the world. God loved us by manifesting his son. But you see, the love, English has, it plays a little trick on us when we talk about love. Because love in English is love. I love my cat. 
I love my husband. I love bread. And I love God. What does it mean? To love God. Man's desire is to look for a God whom he can depend on. So that in times like this, when we are moving through the fairy furnace, we can count on God. But God's desire, our, when the scripture says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Or it says the greatest commandment is this, that you love, your, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and then love your neighbor as yourself. That love is a dependence on God. If we don't know that, we will sing, I love you, I love you, and not train our minds to depend on God. What does it mean to depend on God? It means to trust him. There are various words that are given in these scenarios. To trust him, to have faith in him. God wants our dependence in him, our trust in him. I would dare to say that that is God's greatest desire for us. His greatest quest. If you ask God, what do you want from us? It is that we will depend on him. That is why scripture says he is a jealous God. What does it mean? That you should have no other God. So we can depend on him, trust in him for everything. We can believe in him. That is why Hebrews 11 says, says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Because faith is a manifestation of trust. You, we would sing and dance and do hallelujah if we don't have faith, if we don't have trust, if we don't have dependence on God. We will just be running around. I believe by the Holy Spirit there will be a shift today. Amen? It is so important to God that we depend on him, we trust in him. So much so that the attribute of righteousness was given to Abraham. Only because of his dependence in God. Romans 4, 3 and Genesis 15, 6. It says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And you know, I, I often say the, the kingdom of God operates in keys. 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 There are doors. If you have a house and you... They, 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 they say it is your house. You have your name on the documents, but you don't have the keys. You and the person who, has, who, ha, who doesn't have the house, there won't be a difference because access is closed. Access is not available for you. It's not available to the one who doesn't own it. The kingdom of God operates in keys. Yesterday, something just dawned on me at home, and I called my son, Jaden. I said, I first of all asked him, is it Mark 8 where he talks about Bartimaeus? He said Mark 10. And I had to refer it and found that he was right and I was wrong. <laughs> now, what does Mark 10 say? He says, Bartimaeus, he asked, he, he asked what was happening and they said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Listen, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. But when Jesus was passing, he didn't call Jesus of Nazareth. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. A key. Connecting the man Jesus with the prophetic word that was given by Isaiah. So that that which is in Jesus, not the flesh, that which is in him as the prophesied Messiah will come to manifest manifestation for him to receive. The kingdom of God operates in keys. And so my greatest desire on earth is to find keys. Keys in the kingdom. God's greatest desire is for us to trust him. If we don't have anything for today, take this one. God's greatest desire is for us to believe his word. To believe in the character of who he is. To believe and trust in him. You see, signs and wonders can operate around us. But if we don't have this mindset, we will wallow like the children of Israel. Who knew the acts of God? 
but Moses knew his ways. Your trust in someone or your level of trust in someone is only to the degree to which you know him. My wife trusts me because we've been married for this many years. It is very, very difficult to trust someone whom you know not about. You can hear about them. You can know of them. But trust comes with knowledge. That's why in Daniel 11.32 it says, But they that know their God, they shall be strong and do great things exploits because the knowledge of him who has called us is a direct correlation with the exploits that we'll have in him. The knowledge of him who calls us God is a direct correlation with our expression or the manifestation of who we are called to be in him. No doubt Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.10 after counting everything all done, he said, that I may know him. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable to his death. It is difficult to know, to trust someone you don't know. So as I'm talking about trust, what I'm saying is our pursuit should be to know him. Because it is in the knowing that the trust in him will grow. How do we know God? How do we know God? Remember again I said, it is possible, in John 4, 22, it is possible to worship a God we don't know. And that is really disastrous. It is, it is unfortunate. I mean, it's good to be in the presence where things are being said about God and uh, some knowledge of God. But our desire should be to know. Because the woman who had six, is it six uh, husbands and was not married then, when, whom Jesus met at the well, Jesus spoke to her. And when the knowledge of him who spoke to her arrived, when, when she had the aha, the revelation of God, she went out and started pro broadcasting about Jesus. Because there was a knowing that came to fill the gap. How do we know God? There are many ways, but for today, we'll just talk of one. Which I find very, very important. And in my opinion, we miss out on it a lot. We can know God by studying the logos. The logos, the word of God. But greater knowledge, that will be head, head knowledge. We will talk and quote it. But greater knowledge comes in the revelation of the Logos. Now, how do we get the revelation of the Logos? The revelation, the Rema word. How do we get it? By ministering unto the law. This is an art that is very, very missing in our Christian circles today. Ministering unto the law. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11. 2 verse 11, verse, verse 18, you know. It says, the boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Remember, what happened in the days of Samuel and the prophet Eli and his sons and what happened in this scenario? But Samuel ministered unto the Lord. What happened was, scripture says, the word of the Lord was scarce. Rema was so scarce that people were not accustomed to it. It was very difficult for many years, uh, probably hundreds of years, for someone to come and say, I heard the law. But a young man came in due season who had a secret to minister unto the law. As a boy, he started ministering unto the law. The young man Samuel ministered. And because he ministered to the Lord, he had an encounter. 
that changed not just his own life, but changed the trajectory of Israel as a nation. A nation that was void of God, was moving in the desert in confusion. They started hearing the word of God. Then they had a king. Then they had another king. Because one person decided to minister unto the Lord. Because in ministering, it is in the place of ministering that God comes to commune. Remember Genesis? When in the cool of the day, God will come to Abraham, to, to uh, Adam and Eve, that is, as we minister, Abba, Father, I worship you. What does it mean to minister? It means to abide, to remain, to tarry in his presence. When we minister unto the Lord, we receive revelation for who he is and get instruction for our alignment. When we minister unto the Lord, we receive revelation for who, of who he is the knowing. Because the ministering is what is called, again I said, like I said, it's an expression of our love for God. It is that koinonia like a rope that has strands that have been intertwined and is difficult to pull out. That is the place of ministering. Where we wait and just wait and just say I love you. It is not about the problems. The problems will always be there. But I love you. I love you Jesus. ministering unto the Lord. God's desire is that you grow in the knowledge of him. To trust him for your manifestation. Remember the season where we are getting this word. Things are really hard outside. So I'm very cognizant of that. But you know, it is unfortunate to go through the furry furnace and come back the same. It is unfortunate to go through the furry furnace and come back the same and not have an experience. But once we get how, the how of alignment, it will guarantee that we don't come back the same. The presence of God does not guarantee your breakthrough as in the presence of worship. The children of Israel were there with Moses. They will move when the pillar of cloud led them by day and the pillar of fire by night. They all moved. The presence was there. But you see, it's your connection to the God of the presence that makes the difference. But they that know their God, it is a connect, your connection to the God of the presence. That makes the difference. Your understanding of his principles and obedience does. Judas was in the presence of God. He had the manifested God on earth. Walking with him for three and a half years. Giving instructions. When they go for healing, he too will go. Because they went two by two. I don't know whether he too prayed for healing or not. But at least there was some healing when he went. They came back with great rejoicing. He too came back with great rejoicing. Master, oh, the demons flee at the mention of your name. He brought the report too. But the presence didn't have an effect because there was no yielding to the presence. It's very important for us to know these brethren, brothers and sisters. You know, two weeks, when we came into this church about six years ago, five and a half years ago, Two weeks into this church, the prophet James Gore came here. As we moved into the church, first of all, we had James Gore. I was like, I watched this guy online. <sighs> He's here? <sighs> this is impossible. As we moved in, everybody was worshiping. Everybody was praying. You see, by... by <sighs> my desire is that I should not be like everyone. If you be like everyone, you have everyone's results. My greatest wish in my life is that I will not be like everyone. So when I get into the environment, I begin to send up my antennae and sense. He says, what must I do, Lord? 
sensing. And as we sat, I remember us sitting here when the roads were orderly before COVID. <laughs> as we sat here, the man of God, if you are not from Africa, you won't understand the man of God com com uh, concept. And then it will make you sway you away, but take it from me, the man of God. Well, the visiting preacher <laughs> went out. <laughs> and, and I felt in my spirit, go out. I said, okay, I'll go out. So I left my wife and our son, just son then, stepped out. I saw him, I said, it's nice to see you. It's, I, I'm, and truly I was. I, I just had to greet him. It's so, it's so glorious. I'm so happy because I know he's a man who understands the presence. As I was speaking, I said, he said, thank you, thank you. What's your name? I said, my name is Calypse. As I was going, he said, come back. I see a light in your face. What is that I see? I see a light. It's not about the light I'm talking about. You see, Apostle Paul says, I fight not like one beating the air. Let us just go and worship and then go back home. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If it's like that, I'll stay at home. Frank, I mean, okay, of course I won't stay. You know me. But you know, what? I, you get the point I'm, I'm making. If it's just to come and then we sit and go back every day and go back every day, may God help us. That I may know him. There are many of us here who are like Peter. This one I got and I need to just mention. Closing very soon in a few minutes. There are many of us here who are like Peter. Jesus said, Peter, the enemy has demanded for you to be sieved as wheat. But I have prayed for you. You see, he didn't pray for Peter that he will not fall into the temptation. But he prayed that his what faith will not fail. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, the problem around us is not the temptation. The problem is lack of faith. When our faith falls, that is why Jesus said, if I, when the Son of Man returns in Matthew, he said, will he find, he didn't say, will he find love? Because we'll still be singing and talking about love. So will he find faith? Because faith will be really scarce. And so Peter said, Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you are strong, strengthen your brethren. Strengthen your brothers and sisters. Why are we talking about trust? Why are we talking about knowing God? Why are we talking about abiding in his presence? I believe there are many of us here the enemy targets Peter because he knows that when Peter pray, when Peter stands, the brethren will stand. There are many of us who are letting loose of the plow. So he that sets his hands on the plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom. And by reason of that, because the enemy is older than us, he knows that when we let loose, when the one who God has made head of the area, you are head of your family spiritually. You may even be the youngest, but you are head of your family. When you let loose, head of your community, head of whatever clan it is you are, when you let loose, when the enemy sifts you like wheat and your faith goes down, then the shepherd is not there. So the sheep will scatter and they will be ravaging by the enemy. It's a kingdom of darkness principle or, or modus operandi a way of operation that is being revealed to you today you see the issue is not the challenges the issue is the faith he wants his after your faith if your faith goes down not just you everyone connected to you goes down how do you build your faith through koinonia in his presence that is how you get to know him. They that know their God, they shall be strong. There's no need to be strong when the wind is not blowing. You have to be, your called, strength is called for when there is an absolute need to be weak. There are not need, but an absolute reason to be weak. When everything around is crumbling and we just feel like crumbling too. They that know their God. They will be strong 
and do great exploits. Amen? Today, we'll be praying for just very soon, a few minutes. Uh, I, 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 as I was this, trying to sense how, to, how do we end today's um, I know that in Isaiah 6, it says, in the day, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. You know, without him, we can do nothing. All this we talk about is useless. And so we need to invite him to release so that King Uzziah will die so that we can see the Lord. King Uzziah represents the ceiling, the demonic, whatever, that is around us. Because you can't rise and shine and the glory of Lord be upon you if your Hosea is still manifesting. To some, to some people, it could just be the flesh. It could be a weakness. Something that has held them for too long. And you see, it is hard to deliver someone else if you yourself, you are going through the same problem. <laughs> Practically impossible. Jesus can only... He said, if the same power that dwells in Christ dwells in you, the same power, because that power raised up Jesus from this death, that that same power is able to quicken your mortal bodies because it is resurrection power. That which happened to Jesus, God is faithful to do it in you and me. Amen? So today, um, as we are ministering not just for those who are here, but even for those who will be listening online even later on. There is power. Not by mind. Not by power, but by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. There is an anointing that breaks yoke. Because of the anointing, the yoke is broken. There is power to release. So, uh, I just feel like we'll pray for Two things. One, those who want to know Christ. You don't know about Jesus or you've been dwindling between knowing, uh, am I a Christian, not Christian? I'm trying between Buddhism and Christianity and shuttling between the two like a taxi running from the airport to the city center. <laughs> Make a decision for Christ today. Make a decision for Christ today. There's a lot I can tell you about my experience with Jesus, the person of Jesus. As a little boy, my experiences. The God of heaven. <laughs> when everything was down, who visited me? There's a lot I can tell you. About my, I talked about many of us are here seated. We are the foundation, the, the, those who are supposed to be holding our family strong. There is a moment in my life when my, fam, my mom had traveled from the U.S. very sick. There was something inside causing, like, it's like a flame. So we put a towel, very wet towel. And in 45 minutes, the towel will get dry. We didn't know what was inside. She just came from U.S., ran some tests. They couldn't find anything. So we were confused in the house. She began turning white. I was the biggest person in the house. And I was in the university. So I'll go to, on walking to the university, I'll be crying. Because I could see my mom dying. She just came from U.S. seeing doctors. My brother spent a few thousands of dollars. She's back to Cameroon. She said, I want to come and die at home. I don't want to give trouble. And I walked to the university weeping. Sit in class, I couldn't concentrate. Then one day, as a teen, I was probably 20, 21. I decided to leave the class. It was an area, you know, football, soccer pitch. Knew it was just being constructed, so there weren't too many people there. So I took my books. And I went, ah, God, not on my watch. Father, not on my watch. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I moved around that pitch praying and asking God and begging for mercy and speaking as there were no tongues. Just, oh, Father, this is a lie from the pit of hell. It says the enemy comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you may have life. So I can see by the signature of what is happening to know that it is the enemy. No talk about God has given, God is taking, or about to take. No, 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 forget it. 
as I was praying and moving around alone in that bush, a song started coming in my mind. At one point, I stopped praying. I couldn't, the words were difficult to utter. I heard a word, a song in me. If God be God, let him be God. If God be God, let him be God. If God be God, let him be my God. If God be God, let him be God. I started singing that song. It was the same, I believe, the anointing that was on Elijah in Mount Carmel. God took me to that place by his grace. And not a song of doubting God because I know who myself. It is a song that petitions for the presence to come and change things. And so as I was praying and moving around, I felt in me, go back home. So I went back home. As I went home, not having eaten, of course, fasting, I sat down. A few minutes later, my elder sister said, there's this, she just started talking about, there's this friend, this friend, and he's a brother's friend, and his wife, his wife, his wife. Then he said, he's married to, she's married to a doctor. I said, what's the doctor's name? She called the name. I don't know the doctor. She doesn't know the doctor. Just a friend who's friend and friend. I said, that's the person we have to see. Where is she? How do we get the number? I don't have the number. We started calling. Called UK, called this, called this, finally got the number. When we went to him, he said, Calypse, I'm, have, I'm, I'm operating on your mom tomorrow. I said, Dr. Ward said, he said, don't be worried. I'm operating on her tomorrow. If God be God, let him be God. There are many of us, the plea today is for us to arise and shine. Don't let the enemy trample on you and see if you like wheat and cause your faith to fail. So if you want to receive salvation, if you're online, if you're here, if you're here, please, it's okay, stand to your feet. When I received, went for the prayer of salvation, I went in three different occasions because I wanted to be sure that I'm sure. <laughs> or you can come to me or one of the elders, or you can come to me later. The other prayer point is for strength. And when you are strong, strengthen your brethren. If you feel like you are not so strong today in your walk, or you left it sometime, you used to be strong, you have memories of being strong, but today it is not working. Could you just rise to your feet? Please. This is impartation for strength. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. You feel like you're the sustainer of your family, but you've been wallowed in the problems and the difficulties and you've lost your place. The priestly place. Due to the weakness that came over you. You see, when the enemy gets us, what he does, just like for Samson, is he takes away our sight. And when we can't see, all we do is to grind and grind and grind. And what is grinding? To revolve around the problem, not the solution. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Thank you for the power of ministration. For the angels that are here. May they touch everyone, Lord. Let there be strength in the name of Jesus. Let the strength be renewed in the name of Jesus. Let their strength be renewed in the name of Jesus. Let their strength be renewed in the name of Jesus. Let strength come from on high in the name of Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Spirit move and touch everyone. That from today, there will be unusual, miraculous strength to wait upon the Lord, to pray, to be led of the Spirit. It says, as many as are led of the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Let there be strength today. And I pray for the power to guard their minds, that they will not go back to the wallowing place. For it says, guard your minds with all diligence. All diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. Let there be a power to guard 
their minds. Oh, above all, I pray for the ministration of the old one, the ancient of these, the Holy Spirit. Oh, for we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We know the tactics of the enemy. And so we heal to the Holy Spirit. Everyone here, oh God, even those who didn't arise, those who didn't stand, may you strengthen all of us, Father. Oh, Jesus, strengthen all of us. Mm -hmm. Your desire is not that any should perish, but that we may come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, cause the rhema to increase in us. And to anyone who is sick, if you're sick or you're trusting someone for healing, please rise to your feet. There is, you know, when I remember a long time ago, when I had an impartation, I trusted God that people won't fall. Because we did some studies and found out that when you fall, the thing doesn't, whatever you're yearning for, doesn't necessarily go. So I have a, a little not so positive with falling. Not that it's, I'm happy if, if you feel like you want to, God will do it. But what I'm yearning for is results. 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 Mm -hmm. Give myself away. Boys. Oh, if you have a sickness, it is ease, it is comfort. So you can use me. I give myself away. Hey, I give myself away. So you. There is a presence here, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the mighty man in battle, the great I am that I am. And there are angels ministering. So his angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to heirs of salvation, that the expectation of the righteous might not be cut off. So there are angels ministering. Father, let your angels minister to the heirs of salvation. For your angels attend over your word to do it, to perform it, to bring it to pass. Let there be a ministration of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, let there be a ministration of the Holy Spirit. That the, the feeble nature, oh God, the feeble knees will receive strength. The feeble knees will receive strength. And to those who are online, those who will be listening to this, we pray the same manifestation upon their lives. pray the same manifestation. I am the Lord that healed thee. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord that heals you. I sent my word and I healed your disease. We rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. He says, therefore has that name been highly exalted above every other name that at the mention of that name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess let every knee of sickness bow every problem it may not even be sickness but organ issues whatever it is let it bow and let the resurrected power of resurrection power of christ make manifest that which is not for in the in you we call the things that be not as though they be thank you father Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, great one. Thank you for your anointing, oh God. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you for the ministration of the Holy Spirit. As we go home, we are going home with your presence. As we go home, this ministration is not ending today. It's not ending here. It is continuing by the grace of God and by the work, the functioning of the Holy Spirit. That as we go home, oh God, when we leave this place, the presence of God will depart with us. It will go with us. It will lead us and direct us. In the glorious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we seal everyone with the blood of Jesus. In this season when there is a move, a shifting because of COVID, we pray for divine exemption. We pray for divine exemption. We pray that we will grow bountifully as we sow by the authority of your word. We pray for divine exemption. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Lord bless you.